Hello everyone. Welcome to episode five of the Visible Mending Workshop presented by the Davenport Public Library. In today's episode, we're gonna be working on weaving, like this example here. You can choose a variety of colors or choose colors that will blend into the color of the fabric, such as blue threads on jeans. Here are a couple examples of uh, weaving patches that I've sewn together. This one on a piece, scrap piece of denim and then this, this one just on a random scrap of uh, fabric here. You can see I use different colors and different uh, proportions. You can really go wild with the colors that you like best, or like I said, you can match it to the fabric that you're repairing. Before we get started, I'd like to talk about this book, Darning, Repair, Make, Mend by Hikuro Noguchi. I've always thought of darning as uh, what you do with knit fabrics like sweaters and socks and weaving is what you do with woven fabrics like we're working today but that's kind of a distinction I've just kind of made up. Uh, in this book there are different mending techniques that are demonstrated and can be used with knits or wovens. Uh, your materials sometimes are a little different but um, the philosophy and how to is pretty similar. Uh, this is a demonstration of a, the weaving technique that we're going to be using today, or at least similar to the weaving technique. And you'll see back here, there's lots more different ways of mending. This is on a shirt. So this is a great one for exploring different ways, different kinds of um, clothes and different kinds of materials, all kinds of repair ideas. Let's talk about the materials you'll need today. You're going to need thread snips, of course, and fabric shears can come in handy depending on how sharp your thread snips are, but you're going to want some fabric shears, especially if you're working with heavier fabric like denim. You're going to need some ordinary sewing thread. It doesn't matter what color and you don't need very much. Uh, you're going to need some threads for your weaving. I'm using embroidery floss. I really like the way it makes a nice flat, um, solid weaving. Looks really nice. You're also going to need needles, of course. Um, just an ordinary uh, embroidery needle will work just fine for all of it. I'm also going to use a sashiko needle. You do not have to use a sashiko needle. It just, because of its length, it uh, really makes the weaving a little bit easier and smoother, but an embroidery needle works just fine as well. Uh, some pins might come in handy at some point. You're also gonna need a little fabric scrap to use for stabilizing your patch. Uh, it can be any color. I would choose something lightweight. This is just a scrap piece of muslin I had on hand. It's not going to be seen. So like I said, it can be any color. Uh, cotton, quilting, quilting cotton is a real good choice. And if you have one on hand, an embroidery hoop can be uh, really great for keeping your tension even, but it's optional. It's not absolutely necessary. And of course, you're going to need your fabric that you're going to uh, make your patch on, so your sampler patch. A quick note about choosing colors. Uh, that's entirely up to you. Uh, for threads, you can use all one color, you can use two colors, you can use multiple colors. That's entirely up to you. The one exception might be if you were repairing something lightweight, like a cotton shirt, and you wanted the mend to be less visible maybe, kind of almost invisible mend, uh, then you're going to want to choose fabrics and threads that match the shirt as much as possible. Uh, but for our work today, we're gonna go colorful and we're not going to pay too much attention to our background fabrics. It's not really gonna matter with our samplers. So let's get started. Okay, there's several different ways to make these weaving patches. The one I'm using has been demonstrated by Amrona Konaraj, who is the author of our um, guiding light here, the Visible Mending. Um, this was posted on her Instagram page. I highly recommend that you check it out. She has lots of uh, demonstrations on her IGTV page and on her stories and her highlights that she's kept. Uh, this one's in her IGTV um, list. Uh, and again, her Instagram handle is at bookhow, 
B-O-O-K-H-O-U. Lots of great ideas, highly recommend. So the first thing we need to do is create a hole. Now, of course, if you're actually repairing a pair of jeans or something, you don't have to create the hole, but we're gonna start by creating the hole. I've already drawn a little circle here. And I'm going to use my fabric shears here because they're just a little sharper to cut through fabric. Again, this is something that's not gonna show. I happen to have a friction pin handy and that's what I used but you don't have to use any a pencil or pen. Uh, it's not gonna show, so whatever you have handy. Just draw a little shape. I chose a circle. It's pretty, uh, for starting out, it's kind of simple and straightforward. Now, if this was a hole in an actual pair of jeans, there might be threads around it that are um, still hanging on and kind of loose. You'll want to uh, clean the, up the hole like uh, by clipping off those loose threads. And then you're gonna take your small piece of muslin. You want it to be bigger than the patch by a couple, by pretty generously bigger than the patch. An inch, inch or more bigger than the patch. You will trim it down later, so don't worry too much about it being too big. And center it then over the hole. Okay, now we're going to base this scrap of fabric down and you do that from the back. So holding the fabric so it stays centered, we're going to Base around the edge of the circle that we've cut. Now with basting, you don't need to worry about the size of your stitches. Um, I'm using the ordinary sewing thread here. Um, again, any color will do. Uh, try to make the circle fairly even distance from the hole, um, maybe a quarter of an inch. By doing this kind of patch, you uh, stabilize the edges so they won't continue to fray. You know, in fact, you, you're you in practice, you're hemming around the hole so it won't keep, uh, keep getting worse, getting larger. Okay, so I've got to baste it down. Now we're gonna cut a hole in that piece of fabric, scrap fabric. And again, if your thread snips are sharp enough, you don't probably won't need um, fabric shears, but they are, for, in my case, the fabric shears work a little better. Now you wanna cut out the hole, the same size as the, our original hole. Don't cut beyond it. So. And next we're going to clip corners, uh, curves. And since it's a circle, there's curves all the way around, so. To clip curves, we're gonna clip through both the uh, muslin scrap that we've uh, basted to the main fabric and the main fabric. And we're gonna cut two, but not past the basting line. So go all the way around doing that. Again, fabric shears a little sharper, um, easier to make a more precise Go all the way around. Okay. Okay, we've got our um, piece of scrap material basted down, and we've cut the hole and cut clipped the corners. And now the next step is to take this scrap muslin and push it through the hole to the back. So pull it on through. it to the other side. Now you want to kind of finger press, you can just, if you have an iron handy, comes in, uh, you can iron this to help flatten it, but you can just finger press it too. So just kind of make a nice smooth edge there. Let's look at the front, see how that looks. Yeah. So you can see we've got, we've basically we've hemmed that um, hole so it won't keep fraying. And then I'm going to use a couple pins. This is just um, to help hold the muslin in place. It's not, it's an optional step. 
If you happen to have some iron-on fusible um, interfacing, you can use a couple pieces to tack down the corners. Um, and basically this is just to keep it out of the way and keep it smooth. Make sure that's nice. And okay, and if you have an embroidery hoop that you want to use, now is the time to add it. Um, it is optional. I like working with embroidery hoops. Oop, I've got some help here from Poppy. Um, I find it a lot easier to keep my tension even, but it's not um, absolutely necessary. Okay, I have to go move the cat and then I'll be back. We're going to start by sewing our warp lines, which are the lines of thread that go up and down. So I'm going to start just off to the side of the patch toward the bottom so that I get good coverage when I'm uh, weaving the weft threads. I want to completely cover your patch and bring it straight up and back down. Now, to create the next line, bring your needle up through the fabric right next to the first line. You can leave a little space between them. Um, it's a little easier to weave them if they're slightly further apart. And do it above, you know, a good eighth to a quarter inch above your uh, patch here, your hole, and bring it straight down. They don't have to be perfectly even or perfectly straight, but it'll look better if you uh, try to keep it as even and as straight as possible. So we're just going to keep going across. Okay, so I've uh, got my okay. I've got my warp lines all sewn in place. Uh, I'm going to finish it off on the back. Okay, now I'm going to get ready to uh, sew my weft lines, which are the lines that go across and create the weaving pattern. Now you noticed on my uh, warp lines, I used all one color, but you can certainly use as many colors as you'd like. Um, and you can even create patterns. So making sure that my I'm not doubling up my uh, scrap piece of muslin, I'm going to start down here actually off the patch because the circle curves down a little bit. So And also I want to reinforce down here a little bit. So I'm going to start about here and bring my thread up. Okay, so bring my thread up. I'm just going to start weaving over and under. Go about across. Now, obviously, I haven't picked up all the lines yet because I'm going to go straight across. This is a curve, so I'm going to start with a smaller section here and we'll gradually add on. And then, just like we did on the warp lines, we're going to sew down into the fabric. And bring it back up in the next spot. So I'm going to go just one thread over and come back. So helps to turn it. Helps to turn it sometimes. And now just the opposite over and under. Sometimes, especially the first couple lines across, I have to really think about what I'm doing. Start over here. Just like we did with the warp lines, you want to be sewing your ends through the fabric and the um, scrap in the back. It helps reinforce the edges of the fabric. Let's see if I can get this right. It helps sometimes to kind of um, do it above instead of right down next to the previous line and kind of use your finger to push in and 
up and down. Make sure I've got that right. And pull it across. Just have this in the way. I'm gonna get that out of the way. Back down through the fabric. And then back up. I keep these lines a little closer than the vertical lines, the warp lines. So I'll go under that very first one. Of course, you don't have to do one line all in one um, go. You can do it part way through and then um, pull your thread through and then pull, um, weave the rest of the way across. You can kind of use your needle to um, smooth it out, keep it neat and even, and then bring this one up right here and back across. You can see how a sashiko needle can kind of be handy because it can uh, go, it's long enough that it can, on a small hole like this, it can go most of the way across. And you can kind of push down a little bit here on the previous row to kind of even it out. You can also kind of use your finger on the back there to pull it down. I'm gonna change colors. And all you do to change colors is you just go to the back and make a knot, on, a knot on the back, on the outside of the weaving here. And then knot up a new thread and start it off, um, making sure that you keep your up and down weaving even. Okay, I'm finishing up the last line here. I went a little above the hole to reinforce that top part of the circle. As you can see, I switched colors a couple times. You can switch colors as many times or as few times as you like on both the warp and the weft. And remove my hoop here. Okay, there it is. Now, on the back, you can see there's some extra fabric. Um, there's a couple things you can do here. You can trim this down a little bit. This is plenty large, so I would, I would get too close. Leave a good half inch, maybe a little more around. I might trim a little bit off here. If you have uh, iron-on fusible interfacing, you can put a couple, a little piece or two, um, cut it down a little bit. The other thing is, if it is, say, on the knee of a pair of jeans, as you're sticking your foot into your pant leg, it's gonna keep catching on this. So another solution to that would be to get out your Sashiko thread and do a little Sashiko stitching around. Here's an example. She didn't do a weaving mend. This is Mending Matters by Katrina Rodebaugh. Uh, but she did continue her um, Sashiko stitching, just simple running stitches above and around uh, these patches on these jeans. So that helps reinforce um, an area that's traditionally wears out pretty quick. And it uh, quite frankly looks real nice. And it will help um, keep that fabric from catching on the foot as you're um, uh, whoever is putting on the jeans. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode and were inspired to try it yourself. We would love to see what you create. So if you have an Instagram account and you post a picture, please include the hashtag DPL Visible Mending. The DPL stands for Davenport Public Library. And also tag our account, which is at Davenport Library. If you have questions or suggestions, you can email me at ahetzler at davenportlibrary.com. I hope you'll join us again next week when we'll be stitching some fun applique pieces similar to something like this. Until then, happy stitching!